Hi and welcome to Retro Tech Guardian. In this video, we're going to be having a quick look at this little Sony Watchman. I absolutely love these little Sony Watchmans. Um, just, I just love the design of them. Um, I love the fact that they've managed to get this little CRT tube because this is a CRT, not an LCD. Um, it's laid on its side. I'll explain a bit more about that in a second. Um, I just really, really like these little units. So, uh, and there's a little magnifying screen case came with it. Um, I think I paid about £12 for this on eBay a while ago. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, it's, uh, it all works. Um, I can't do the sound, unfortunately, because I don't want copyright infringements. And uh, I have got uh, my Xbox connected up to uh, a video. And then transmitted through this powered aerial here. Uh, I swapped the connections over on that so it transmits out instead of receiving. Um, if you want to see how I've got that set up, I do have another video um, showing you how I set my setup up. Everybody does it slightly differently, but if you want to watch that, it does show you how you can put analog signals across to your TV so they can actually be used if you want to use them. Um, and I want to use my collections. I don't want them to just sit on the shelf gathering dust. I actually want them to be used. So anyway, back to this. Um, it's a little Sony Watchman model number FD2B. Now, unusually, um, I can't seem to find out a lot of information about the 2B. I don't know if this is a British version or... I found an FD10s, there's loads of FD2As, 2Es. Now, I doubt it's as simple as what it is, but I wondered if the FD2A was too American, B2 Britain, uh, or British, and uh, the E European. I don't know if that's the case. Um, made around about 1984 to 86, I believe, something like that. Um, and it uses... DC 6 volt with an average 1.6 watts. Um, it does take four AA batteries, which I've got because I don't have the power supply for this. So, on the front, you have a little speaker grill. Uh, you have your tuning. There's no radio in this one. This one, this is a, a model that didn't have a radio. Some of them did. This one doesn't. Uh, you have your um, TV tuner there so you've got your um, your channels and then you've got your CRT tube here again that's a CRT um, quite a clever design on this I mean there's people that's done justice to these more than what I will today um, but there is videos out there on YouTube that show you exactly how these tubes work um, I'm not going to be taking this one apart today um, I will be doing to clean it all and check capacitors and I notice there's a bit of dirt on the back here and I'm hoping I can clean that out. Um, you can't quite see it on the screen, I don't think you would. Um, right, so on this side, um, you have your brightness control and you have your tuning power off sound or TV. Because you could, if you wanted, I don't know why, but you could have just your TV sounds. I suppose if you were watching Top of the Pops back in the day, uh, you could listen to the music without watching all the people with their bad hairdos, like I had when I had blonde highlights in my hair when I was, what, 14, 15? And, um, I don't know. <clears throat> back in the day, people did that. On the top, you've got an extension antenna socket, and that's it. On the other side, you have your earphone socket, mono earphone socket, and your DC power supply, which is, I can't quite see that from here. I, my eyes are terrible. I think that's positive center, and I'm not sure. And then on here, you've got your contrast setting of high, medium, and low. Now, <clears throat> and usually you don't have a, a, a dial like you do for uh, your brightness and what have you it's done with just a little selector switch and um oh wrong side where are we 
just there again. And it's set for high, medium or low. Um, and then on the back, you have your vertical hold. I think that's vertical hold. Yes, it is. And you have your antenna. So let's give it a try. I've got my Xbox on. I've got my aerial on. Um, I do have to put the aerial very close to it at the moment. I need to set this up properly. Um, so we turn it on. Oh, and you can see. There we go with the Xbox Live. I don't know if you can see that there. Let's see if I can adjust the brightness again, if I can find which one it was. So if I angle that down to there and then show you there, you can see the screen. If I try and adjust the brightness. No. Okay, but you can see the Xbox Live there. So it does work. Uh, there is sound, but obviously, like I say, I don't want copyright infringement, so I've not put the sound on. Um, you can see it's still getting a signal, even with the aerial down. It just is better when it's closer to the aerial at the moment, but that's something I need to work on. Um, so we'll turn it back off. Oh, actually, let's turn it back on. Let's try the viewfinder with it, the magnifier, so that you can uh, hopefully see it a bit better. So it unclips, these fold out, and if you have a look on the side there, there's some little studs, they just push into there, they push into there, and then this just slides onto the top like that, doesn't seem to hold very well, yep, well, that's what it is. That's all it is. So then now, as you can see, it makes the screen... Let's get that tuned in a bit better. You can see it makes the screen a lot bigger. Um, it's probably watchable like that. Uh, without it, it is really hard to see. But then uh, I am quite ancient and my eyes aren't what they used to be. So basically the tube on this, um, instead of being like a normal CRT, which would look something like this, and you'd have a flat screen, um, just like some of the other videos you've seen of mine, uh, you'd have, why won't that go back in properly? Oh, that's right. There you go. So you'd have a flat screen like that, and then you'd fire your electrons at the um, surface of the screen here. Uh, and it would scan horizontally and horizontally and vertically uh, and then that would show you the screen here now on this one it's laid flat as you see it so the tube is here and then it comes out and then it fires onto this and uh, if you have a look it's ever so slightly curved that now that's the same screen as what you see on a flat one so that's exactly the same. The only difference bit is the horizontal one isn't different. It still scans horizontally exactly the same. But to get that angle and to get this shape, what they've done is they've they've added um, vertical deflectors. Um, and I don't know exactly which one they've used on this because I've not taken it apart yet. So we'll find out together when we take it apart. And basically that deflects it so that it can show it on this curved screen instead of being flat here, which is where a normal CRT would be fired to. So it's actually a very, very clever design, which is why I like these so much. Um, I mean, if this had a standard tube in it, a normal tube, your, your screen would be at the end here and the machine would be much bigger, um, even to get that same size screen. So, yeah, I really do like this. Um, and then going back to this model number, the FD2B. Now, if anybody knows what the difference is between the A, the B and the E, and um, please let me know. I did find uh, a service manual for the FD2E. Now, I'm hoping it's the same as this inside. I'll find out when we take it apart. But if anybody wants a copy of that on PDF, it's about seven megabytes in size. If anybody wants that service manual, then please get in touch in the comments or uh, email me. Actually, uh, you better email me so I get your email address. And uh, I will gladly email that onto you if, if you uh, want a 
a copy of that for yourself. Alright, like I say, so again, future video coming up, we will take this apart, clean it, check the capacitors for leakage, anything like that. Um, I will show you the battery compartment actually before we go, just to show you how clean it is in here. Um, cause there's been no leakage on the battery terminals. Oh, there go my batteries, goodbye. And as you can see on there, it's extremely clean. So, uh, very chuffed with that. Um, you do see a lot of them where people leave batteries in. Please, everyone, anything you've got. It doesn't matter if it's retro or new. Um, if it takes batteries like these, don't leave them in to leak. Because it will just absolutely destroy your equipment if it goes too far. Anyway, after saying that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. And like I say, if you've got any more information or you want to copy that service manual for the 2E, uh, please get in touch. I'll be glad to send it to you. Thanks again. Goodbye.